Romani here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and today I want to talk about something that is, you know, um, to me, I can't avoid it, right? Um, and I like to share things with my YouTube audience because, you know, to be honest with you, there aren't a whole bunch of people in my life that I can actually talk to about these types of things. And it's just really awesome to, to upload a video and to have, you know, people like you respond who are on this path, who are like-minded and who think about the same types of things and have the same types of goals. So if you're on my channel, chances are you're somebody who has been attracted to the channel because you're involved or you're interested in spiritual growth. You are involved um, or and or interested in spiritual truths and you, um, you know, you want to know more. You want to understand more about life. You want to understand more about yourself. You want to go for it, right? Things want you want things to make sense to you like you're in this life experience to gain as much information that you can so that you can have an enjoyable life experience even though maybe the beginning of your life or the first half of your life you know really wasn't what you wanted it to be you know maybe it's codependency narcissistic abuse blah 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 blah, blah. And you're trying to make it make sense you want things to make sense that you can have this cohesive experience right and so thank you for being here and thank you for being on that path, because trust me, there are a lot of people that aren't on this path. So, so many of us have gotten pulled in by the Game of Thrones. I mean, it is an amazing, amazing show. And there was a time I actually had to stop watching it because what happened to me was I was, I was noticing that my imagination was being, was drifting off to episodes. Thinking about these poor people and how barbaric it's been and humanity, my God, what we've been through. You know, it's just the way my mind works. So it was a little bit overwhelming. So it was a time where I stopped watching it completely. And since then, my daughter has has pulled me back into it, said, Mom, just watch it. Watch a few more, few more um, episodes with me. Okay, so here we are. So I decide to sit down and watch Game of Thrones with a completely new set of eyes. What can you learn from this, right? This is very true to life in terms of, not dragons, but I mean the barbaric nature of men, the barbaric nature. And when I say men, I mean all of us, right? And so there has been in history this, this type of, um, is barbarianism even a word? You know, I don't even know. But I decided to sit down and watch Game of Thrones with the completely new set of eyes and what I walked away with is is something that I would like to share so because so many of us have are watching Game of Thrones I thought that those people who were interested in the kind of work that I do and who watch my videos would really be interested in this perspective so um, you know on my healing path there are certain things that I've learned about life and one of the most profound things that I've learned about life is, is, has to do with this idea and this concept of separation and contrast and how it is the separation and contrast, you know, in life that although many would, would argue that it is separation and contrast that allows for us to continue to desire and helps pull creation forward. Totally get that. You know, in my, on my journey, I've tried to figure out why I have felt the way I felt. Why did I develop codependency? Why did I feel like an alien for so many decades? You know, um, why do so many people feel like aliens who are human? And, and, and what is this? Why are we so self-critical? Why are we depressed? Why do we have anxiety? Why are we love addicted? Why are we heroin addicted? You know, why are we suffering from suicide? The suicide rate is ridiculous. It's off the hook. Like, what's happening? Like, life is about creation. It's about abundance. It's about moving forward, right? What is it that makes human beings so unable to stay in the flow of creation? And so watching Game of Thrones, what I walked away with is this idea of separation, when you are watching devastation to happen, when you are, when women are being abused, it's separation, it's contrast, it's them and me, it's man versus woman. When you see um, these clashes of tribes, you know, and, and houses, it's them and me or them and us, it's separation. 
And when you think about what happens inside a soul that is, that is suffering, there is separation, there is contrast. I am not good enough. There's a separation of, from the mind, from the soul. The mind cannot appreciate the soul. The mind cannot appreciate the inner child, right? The ego cannot appreciate higher self. Ego doesn't want to die to higher self. Ego wants to cling. And the only reason ego wants to cling is because it has been wounded so often and life in the environment has proven that letting go is dangerous. So staying in a defense mode guarantees survival, right? But it's this idea of separation and contrast in our own life experience that causes such great suffering. When we think about wars, it's separation and contrast. More people have died due, you know, in the name of religion than anything. So religion separates us. There's contrast there. It's us and them. You know, politics, us and them. Family arguments, us and them. You know, in-laws, us and them, right? Men and women. So it's, it's this idea of us and them. And I liken it to simple, simple separation. When there is separation between anything and any, in any area of life, there's contrast. And when there is this type of contrast and this mentality of there's a difference between me and them, it's if that space isn't filled with fair mindedness, if that space isn't filled with enlightenment, if that space is filled with fear, then there will be destruction. So where does this idea, why it will actually, why is this such an important concept to me? And, you know, um, why do I think it's worth sharing with all of you today who are interested? I think it's important because in my opinion, what happens in one space happens in all space. So when I am arguing with my brother, that argument is happening somewhere inside of me. If I am feeling defensive about some particular issue, there's some fear inside of me that I'm wrestling with. There's some resistance to something, right? And what we're all trying to do is, is heal resistance. We're trying to come into alignment with what we can't control. We're trying to come into alignment with what we want. We're trying to focus on the things that we can control, release the things that we can't control. We're trying to design our life according to what feels right with us. Far too often, however, many of us are not doing that. You know, um, if you study the law of attraction, what you'll notice is that far too often, human beings in your observation of other people, maybe even of yourself, you'll notice that people talk a lot about, talk a lot in the negative. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't like this. I hope that never happens. And very rarely do you happen upon somebody who says, oh, I love that. I'd love to do that. That's exciting. I can't wait to do that. Wouldn't that be wonderful when? Isn't it going to be wonderful when? Wouldn't it be wonderful if? Oh, that's so exciting. I would love to do that. I would, in the affirmative. That's not our fault. If you have a trauma background, you're wired to survive. You're not wired to thrive. Your brain has, there has been an area, I'm telling you, your brain is hijacked. And the ability to think with the prefrontal lobe and the neocortex has been interrupted. That's not our fault, right? And it takes some work for those of us who are in recovery to understand these concepts and then be able to reprogram the mind sufficiently and efficiently enough to where we are interrupting the paradigm that is and we are effectively creating a new paradigm that will actually help us create heaven on earth, which you can but you have to do it through conscious and deliberate molding of your of the conscious field of the creative mind. If you expect this to just happen, it won't because we are 95% conscious unconscious 95% of the time, which means the default mode network is going to run your life and like Carl Jung says, we will call it fate. It's not fate. It's the holographic nature of reality and the wonderful thing is you thing that we have going for us is that we're human beings, we have a consciousness, and with the right information, tools, support, and guidance, we can change anything, right? But we have to start small. We have to start at the beginning. 
So when you think about a child who, think about a newborn child that has felt rejected by mother and father, right? Mother wants nothing to do with this baby. Think about the contrast that this newborn baby experiences between itself and the environment, right? Think about how disconnected and separate this newborn feels between mother and itself. That, what happens in that space happens across all space. This separation that a child feels between itself and mother will become a separation between itself and itself. So the conscious mind, the psychological mind or the subconscious mind will be in conflict, a contrast to the spiritual soul. So the mind will be in conflict to that which this being feels, needs, desires. So what happens to us as human beings is we, beings, is we become self-alienated. We, became, we become separated from the self. So when I say we, what I'm saying is we are not integrated. Integration cannot take place, mind, body, and soul, right? The accepting of what's happening in my mind and what has happened. The way my body experiences this, the physiological changes that take place in response to the memories and the triggers that have taken place or are being held in the subconscious mind, right? Because there's a physiological response every time we have a trigger and every time we have a memory, every time we have an experience. I cannot integrate, my conscious mind cannot integrate with body until I start accepting the body. I have to understand that what's happening in my body is valid, even if it's uncomfortable, even if the sensations I'm experiencing are unfreaking comfortable, right? It's not my body's fault. We can't integrate mind and body and soul until there is this awakening of the soul self, until we know that, until the mind understands that the soul is valid or the spirit is valid or the energy that we are or the emotions. Language gets us in trouble. An atheist might have problems or an agnostic might have problem, problems with me using the language soul. So energy, so emotion. When there is a psychological disconnect or a separation from that which I feel, the separation and the contrast, I suffer. When I learn to integrate, when I learn to accept psychologically what I feel, then what happens is there, and I accept how my body feels, the physiological aspect of me, the chemical and vibrational aspect of me. When there is this acceptance of all that I am, even if what I am is uncomfortable, even if, I did a video on the shadow self not too long ago. Even if there are things in my history I'm not proud of, we all have a devil and an angel on our shoulder. We all have instincts to deal with. We all have triggers. We all have survival responses, right? And depending on where and how and what we were exposed to will really determine how we have responded to stressors. If my mother drank, there's a very high likelihood that I will drink. If my parents got divorced and cursed at one another, when I feel threatened or abandoned, I might do the same thing, right? So we're all products of our environment. We have to help eliminate shame. So understanding this idea of separation, I think can really help many of us heal from shame. Shame prevents us from looking within right? Because the brain is designed to avoid pain. And so where there is the sense of separation, I am not good enough. I am separate from you. This idea that everybody else abused adult children, adult children of alcoholics, adult children of narcissists struggle with them and me. Everybody else, why me? Why, do, why, why is this happening to me? And they have a better family, so it must be me. We think in terms of well, other people all, this is the language of an abused child. Well, other people aren't going what I'm, what don't have to go through what I've gone through. Other people aren't, other people are happy. I'm not happy. Other people are able to move forward in life. I can't move forward in life. If you listen to the language, there's a lot of assumptions there. And that is really not the language of somebody who is highly aware because somebody who's highly aware knows that to think that everybody else in the world has it easier than they do is not realistic, 
right? But if you think about the mind of a child, us, no, me and them, like they, Johnny has it much easier than me. Johnny's dad comes to parent teacher day and my dad doesn't, you know, that's because Johnny's a good boy and, and I'm not. That's because Johnny, Johnny is better than me, right? Everybody else is better than me. So that's, that's the way a child thinks. And that, that is true because so much of our narrative is tied to the voice of the inner child. And so what we need to do is really, and I really do think that if you watch the Game of Thrones and if you think about where is the destruction coming from and the minute, the minute people join together to fight this common enemy and that threat is gone, they start fighting amongst themselves again because of this idea of them versus me, this idea of separation, right? And so it's important that if we want to feel whole, it's, it, I think it's of some value to investigate this idea, this concept of separation and how it might be playing out in your life. When you walk into work, do you feel like it's them and you? Do you feel like in your own family, it's them and it's you? In your, in your home with your husband or your wife, do you think it's feel like it's them and you? Or do you feel integrated with your husband and your spouse? Or do you feel like it's your friends and then it's you, right? And so this idea, what we're trying to do, I believe, and as people become more integrated with themselves, they're going to feel less and less separate from other people, even though they're independent of, of other people. So as you begin to heal and heal yourself, right? and heal this disconnect of self, which is all tied to feeling disconnected from your family of origin and suffering things like abandoned tra abandonment trauma and attachment trauma. As you become full circle with that and you learn how to heal from that, you heal mind, body, and soul. There's an integration that takes place. You're no longer um, suffering because you hate the way you feel. You accept how you feel. You're no longer feeling separate from you know, limiting beliefs, you're accepting limiting beliefs, but you're choosing to change them. So this beautiful um, integration begins to take place slowly. It doesn't happen overnight because you're changing neural wiring, right? You're actually changing the default mode in the brain, which takes time, right? We're talking about neurology here, dear ones. Like seriously, an aha moment lasts a moment an aha moment you've got to grab it hold on to it work it journal about it talk about it act on it you've got to map your brain for this new aha moment until it becomes a new part of you that's the way you break and interrupt old patterns and old paradigms and create new ones so this is a process and anybody who tells you differently in my opinion just doesn't understand trauma and healing meditations can definitely help you you know, I have plenty of meditations on Insight Timer, plenty of meditations here on YouTube. All of my programs are designed with specific theta brainwave meditations to access the subconscious mind and get to the root of what's causing this separation between you and yourself. Interestingly enough, what begins to happen is as you integrate, you feel less separate from all that is. And so as you connect more to the self, you feel whole with everything around you. It's really a beautiful, beautiful experience. I only speak about the Game of Thrones because um, so many people watch it. And I think that if you watch the Game of Thrones and you pay attention to where the destruction begins, it begins with separation. The minute I become aware that you are different than me, then there can be destruction. And so, if you trace that idea back into your own life, you'll notice that when you felt separate from your family, that's when all this in that, in that space became shame. And I personally don't think there, there's any worse cross to bear than to bear the cross of shame. When you feel shame, it, 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 it um, leaches into every fiber of your being. You feel self-conscious, you feel insecure, you doubt your abilities, you feel like prey. When you go out into the world, you feel like your skin is raw and you live in fear and you live hypervigilant because psychologically, what you're trying to do is prevent additional injury. 
The problem is that is beating the drum of a paradigm of separation. It is beating the drum of shame. It is beating the drum of I am not enough. And unfortunately, due to the magnetic nature of reality and due to the reality that we are all emitting particular frequencies, we are emitting this frequency of prey. And what do we attract? We attract people who are abusive. And so it really is to our advantage to pay more attention to what areas of our life we feel separate from and what areas within ourselves, our emotions, our body. Listen to yourself talk. Do you call yourself fat? Do you call yourself stupid? Do you tell yourself that you're not good enough, right? Your inner dialogue about other people, he is stupid, he is a narcissist, she is this and she is that. Listen to your inner dialogue because that will be, that will be the indicator to where you're experiencing separation. In terms of codependency, codependency is the result of separation. Codependency is a symptom, right? And if you're codependent, you have felt not good enough and not part of. And so your journey is all about integrating within the self and learning to understand what was really at the root of your codependency, heal those codependent belief systems so that you can begin attracting new life experiences. For somebody who has been narcissistically abused, am I saying that you should become one with the narcissist? That's not what I'm saying. You can't become one with the narcissist, right? A narcissist has high narcissistic traits. They lack empathy. They can't see you, which means they have the ability to hurt you, right? And so while you can learn to set boundaries, you can also learn to not be, not give off the emotion or the frequency or not emit the sensation of I am prey and this is someone that I need to be afraid of. The more you love yourself and the more integrated you become, the easier it is for you to be around narcissistic people without being triggered. In fact, they can't pull you down the rabbit hole anymore because you understand the game, right? You don't see yourself as prey anymore. So, I mean, just a couple of days ago, I had um, um, an exchange with my ex-husband and I was so happy that it was a, a short conversation, but I wasn't triggered at all. I saw it for what it was. I was like, okay. I actually invited him to my daughter's graduation and said, you can sit with us if you like. Our daughter doesn't want you to sit alone. She was actually crying about her dad being at her college graduation sitting alone. I asked her, would you like me to call your dad and ask him if he wants to sit with us, my husband and my children? And she said, yes, if you don't mind. I said, for you, absolutely not. And I called him and he laughed in my face. He was passive aggressive. You know, he had a couple of snide remarks. And I said to him, I'm just trying to extend the olive, olive branch. And yeah, sure you are. Yeah, I'd rather sit by myself, was his response. I was like, okay. You know, but that type of an exchange 15 or 20 years ago would have triggered me because I know that he's trying to bait me into a conversation about my intention. And even though my intention was pure, I could sense only be, because you can smell it. After you've been raised by people with high narcissistic traits and you've been around people who have gaslighted you and you know what a flying monkey is, you can smell it. You, you know, other people who haven't been exposed to it can't see it. It's like a police officer, you know, or a fireman. A fireman can smell smoke when other people can't smell smoke. Police officers can tell what's going on in a situation where other people are oblivious to it because of their training. If you've been raised by a narcissist, you have training. You can see things that other people can't see. I heard things in his language. I heard the vibration of his voice. I knew exactly where he wanted the conversation to go, but I was not triggered. And I believe that's because in great part, I've been able to heal the separation of myself. I no longer feel or believe that I'm unworthy. I no longer feel or believe that I need the validation of others to feel good about myself. I believe that I am as worthy as a star in the sky. I believe that I'm an extension of creator itself. I believe that I am an expression or a facet of life itself. No different than a star in the sky, no different than a tree that's meant to bloom. I, no different than a dog, no different than a bird, no different than a flower, a rose bush, an apple orchard, no different. No different. We are, we are facets of life and we've come to evolve. And what's happened with human beings is that our personalities and our psychology and the way the brain gets downloaded with triggers and the way trauma affects the brain 
puts us at a disadvantage sometimes. And so healing separation can heal the destruction within ourselves and our families and eventually our world. And so I hope that this video um, has resonated with some of you. I hope some of you have, have had a few aha moments. And um, I just hope that you work more diligently towards healing on any sense of separation that you feel within yourself, mind, body, and soul. You are the Trinity and you are enough. Bye for now. Until next time. Thank you.